Welcome to lecture 10 where we'll be looking at transportation challenges and issues. In today's lecture, we will discuss congestion and transportation infrastructure, the green supply chain, fuel cost volatility and iron signs of collaboration and visibility. Growing economies and surging populations translate into more traffic and commuters. This has stretched the world's transportation infrastructure to the breaking point. Let's look at land transport first. These are the 15 worst cities for rush hour traffic. Big cities have become victims of their own success and fill the top ranks of this ranking. Notably, six Chinese cities appear in this list. The longest traffic jam in the world was created on the China National Highway 110 between Hebei and Inner Mongolia in 2010. It lasted 12 days with a huge car panorama that stretched for more than 100 kilometers. It was the result of too many vehicles clogging the road, particularly a bevy of heavy trucks carrying construction supplies into Beijing, ironically for road work intended to help ease congestion. It is estimated that as much as 90% of global trade is carried by sea. The sheer scale of ocean shipping means that logistics bottlenecks such as port congestion can create significant problems for companies involved in import-export. So what are the top causes? Chassis shortage. Every container moving in and out of port needs a chassis. Yet many carriers have pulled out of business as it is really difficult to manage chassis operations due to the high rates of movement and demanding maintenance requirements. Shipping will always be at the mercy of bad weather. Combined with aging port infrastructure, unable to withstand rough weather patterns, prolonged storms or heavy snow etc. can cause massive delays when they strike. Strikes happen every year. At some ports, it seems that some form of labour stoppage is always eminent. Even when there are no strikes happening over the years, there has been an increasing shortage of port workers, especially truckers, as it is not an attractive job at all for the younger generation. Spikes in demand are inevitable during festive seasons. During these periods, overcrowded ports are stretched to the maximum and vessels form long queues outside the port waiting for a spot to load or to offload. As strong aviation demand continues, it is likely to put upward pressure on our aviation infrastructure. This is especially true in Asia. For example, Bangkok's Suwanabumi Airport opened in 2006 and reached maximum capacity in that same year. Since every plane needs to take off and land on a runway, aviation's challenge has typically been runway constraints at the airport. However, it's not just the runways anymore. Airspace around airports and flight routes are also becoming congested. Transportation congestion comes at a cost to business. The obvious costs would be cost of fuel and labour. Incidental costs would include damage charges at the ports due to inability to clear containers on time and cost of carrying inventory to compensate for these delays. All in all, there will be increased costs to carriers and higher rates for shippers. In many cities, there is a scarcity of land for development of roads, railways, sea and air terminals. For example, in Singapore, 12% of total land area is already taken up by roads. In view of land constraints and competing needs, there is limited scope for further expansion. This led to the Land Transport Authority LTA, coming out with a zero vehicle growth rate policy. In other places, aging infrastructure has also become an area for great concern as accidents are reported in various countries. Structures such as the Panama Canal, connecting the Atlantic Ocean with the Pacific Ocean, was built more than 100 years ago. While it has served as a key conduit for international maritime trade over the years, its infrastructure is now outdated and cannot even accommodate mega container ships. The more obvious causes of action revolve around maintaining or improving existing infrastructure as well as building new ones. Most of these are local government-led and include works on road networks, railway infrastructure, sea and airports. It may also include building or expanding subway systems for mass transportation to alleviate pressure on road networks. Many governments have set about controlling the vehicle population on their roads through various vehicle quota systems, limiting the ability of people to buy cars and vehicle usage systems, which limit the ability of people to use cars even when they bought one. For vehicles on the road, real-time traffic information helps them make smart decisions to avoid congestion and thus not add on to the problem in those areas. Increasingly, carriers and port operators from all transportation modes are investing in technology and automation to overcome the challenges they face. Network technology, automation, predictive analytics, and IoT provides them with real-time information to make faster and better decisions to reduce downtime, improve safety, and overall boost efficiency while lowering operating costs. Let's look at some of the latest developments. 
Beijing Daxing International Airport opened at the end of September 2019. It can handle 300 takeoffs and landings an hour and expects to handle 45 million passengers by 2021. It will eventually be the world's busiest airport. The entire airport takes up 47 km square, more than half the size of Hong Kong, while the main terminal takes up to 695,000 meters square, making it the largest in the world. Currently, about 33% of global trade or nearly 84,000 ships passes through the Malacca Straits annually. This makes it the world's busiest trade route. While strategically placed, it is also narrow, traffic choke and piracy prone. The proposed Kra Canal is the Asian equivalent of the Swiss or Panama Canal and stretches across the Thailand's Isthmus of Kra, linking the Pacific and Indian Oceans. Bypassing the Malacca trade, Strait would save a distance of 1,200 km for ships. While this idea dates back to the 17th century, it is now being discussed as part of China's One Belt, One Road initiative and could become a reality in the very near future. Traffic congestion and air pollution in Beijing are such headaches in the capital that, that the government has since 2011 used a very complicated bi monthly lottery to award license plates for residents aspiring to own a car. About one plate is awarded for every 2,000 applications. The annual new vehicle quota, which was 240,000 in 2013, fell to 100,000 in 2018 and has helped to restrict the number of cars registered each year. In 2017, the port of Hamburg introduced the first fully automatic system for monitoring reefer containers. The CTAS reefer system uses RFID technology to record factors such as temperature and humidity, which were pre previously recorded manually by staff. Use of this system has facilitated reduction in labor-intensive manual checking and documentation input, virtually eliminated risk of data entry errors, boost both safety and customer satisfaction. Singapore's own Tuas Megaport, when fully developed in 2040, will be the single largest fully automated terminal in the world, with capacity of up to 65 million TEUs. Some key innovations include automated yard cranes, drones, data analytics, and driverless trucks for port transport. As the public becomes more aware of environmental issues and global warming, consumers will be asking more questions about the products they're purchasing. Companies will have to expect questions on how green their supply chain is and how big their carbon footprint is. In earlier lectures, we have learned about transportation's impact on the environment, partly through the gaseous emissions linked to climate change. These gaseous emissions include CO2 and other greenhouse gases, but is usually expressed as a CO2 equivalent and referred to as the carbon footprint. In addition to fossil fuel usage, there are other sustainability areas impacted by supply chains. Excessive packaging used for protection of cargo for long-distance transportation eventually ends up in landfills. For multimodal transportation, there will be a need for facilities to conduct handoffs of cargo from one mode to another, further driving up energy consumption. Waste is created at each step and improper disposal can lead to pollution of the environment. So what motivates carriers and shippers to work towards a green supply chain? For most, it's just the high fuel price that encourages them to find ways and means to optimize their own transportation and reduce fuel costs. Competitive pressure is also a great motivation to lower operational costs in general. If that's not enough, regulatory pressure from both local governments and global bodies will keep carriers in check. Some companies do embrace their corporate social responsibilities seriously and consider it their duty to help safeguard the environment while going about their business of making a profit. This philosophy could derive from shareholder pressure or from internal champions for the cause. For other companies, it is sometimes motivated by desire to increase or maintain brand reputation. To be seen as being a green company is increasingly an important part of corporate identity. Fuel prices generally fluctuate because of seasonal changes. It can also change rapidly if something disrupts crude oil supplies or refinery operations, such as war or civil unrest. Weak economic performance arising from trade tensions has an equally strong impact on fuel price. Fuel price volatility has a direct impact on carriers and shippers. These charts of West Texas intermediate crude oil prices date back to 1946. The absolute peak occurred in June 2008, the highest inflation-adjusted monthly average price of 145 US dollars per barrel and continues to fluctuate through the years. This uncertainty in prices plus growing environmental concerns leads to questions of whether there are enough oil reserves to satisfy demand and what are the consequences if the world were to run out of oil. 
With this question in mind, one of the top career strategies is really to pursue R&D in the area of alternative fuels, such as low sulfur diesel, hydrogen fuel cells, and of course biofuels. They are also working on hybrid vehicles, which are more energy efficient and less dependent on fossil fuels. Fleet management technology allows carriers to optimize the usage of their assets by making decisions such as switching focus to shorter routes, specific routes with less congestion, or reducing service on unprofitable routes, reducing cruise speed to improve fuel efficiency, or even imposing fuel surcharges on customers. Lastly, let's look at the science and art of collaboration and visibility. Visibility is considered a science. There are many scientific and or mathematics-based applications that help improve supply chain visibility, efficiency, and effectiveness, such as wealth management systems, enterprise resource planning systems, and transport management systems. These systems provide visibility mostly with respect to assets such as inventory equipment or KPIs such as inventory turns or the status. They capture and analyze supply chain data for decision making, risk mitigation, process improvement, or just to give proactive alerts of potential disruptions. From an overview perspective, visibility applications can contribute to improve operations efficiency and agility, such as giving shorter delivery windows and better response time, regulatory and security compliance, and uh, overall, there should be an enhanced overall customer experience. The art dimension of supply chain management refers to company-to-company -company tactics, operations and strategies that can improve the supply chain. Collaboration and leveraging each other generally allows better performance than, in, than if acting alone. For example, in vendor managed inventory, a vendor makes it a point to manage the customer's distribution operations and takes full accountability for all KPIs, example inventory turns and on-time delivery. The customer is kept updated in real time through reports or has access through cloud-based platforms. Transportation will continue to become more international in nature. As global sourcing and distribution continues to grow, supply chains will be described more adequately as supply webs, which crisscross globally. The trend of outsourcing to 3PLs will inevitably continue to grow, but the 3PL industry will face more upheavals as more consolidation and integration occurs. One thing is for sure, technological advances will continue to drive changes in the way transportation moves the world. With that, we have come to the end of the transportation segment of logistics operations. See you next time.